imagine that you are in the city of Medina and the year is 11 after Hijra. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa early, he has just passed away and the event of Saqifa has just occurred. Now the Shia of Imam Ali alayhi salam are being forced to pledge allegiance to the new ruler. I want to ask you, what do you think you would do in that situation? Would you speak up, you know, risking your life and the lives of potentially your friends and your family? Or would you take another approach? For example, you give bayah under taqiyya and help the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, in secret. What, what do you think you would do? I think I would try and find out what the general consensus was from everybody else around me and how how they felt about pledging allegiance um, to this man and um, if I could see that there was disharmony or disagreement then I would try and explore that more. But I think you need a, more than one person to help move things forward. So if there wasn't anyone on my, on the same page, then I would perhaps try and, um, like try and chat to people about it and get to understand why they're going to plead allegiance and perhaps, you know, put my view across without pushing it on them. I think if they were to come directly to me and ask me which side you're going to choose, It's so hard to put yourself in that position, but I, I would love to say that I wouldn't pledge allegiance and that at the end of the day, life is fleeting anyway. Um, and every day that we're here is a blessing. So to know that the, the reward of standing up against oppression is far greater than being silent, I think, inshallah, in that, in that time, if it was that kind of moment, I would, would like to think that I would stand up against it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's interesting that you say that because Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he said that if he only had 40 individuals who were willing to support him, then he would have challenged for the caliph and the caliphate. And now I want you to picture that you are standing outside the house of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. This blessed house that we can only imagine where our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ali would go every day and greet his family with such affection and such love. I want you to imagine that you're standing outside and, the enem and you see the enemy come towards the house and you hear that the threat is made against them. And Fatima to Sahra Alaihi salam, she refuses to allow them into her house. I want you now to picture that the door has been broken and that Fatima to Sahra is behind the door and you hear her cries. I want you to imagine that now they've set the house on fire and they're charging in to attack. How would you feel seeing such a thing? And how do you think you would react to that? I 
think I would be in shock and be confused why why they wanted to attack her. I guess it was is their way of um, getting to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, I would. I think in that moment it would be just sheer horror and I would probably just break down. I don't think that I would have felt I was in the power to do something at that point when the house is in fire but I mean I would try and get help and you know especially if her sons were in, were still in the house, you know, making helping, making sure that everyone can get out. Um, trying to get help. It's, it's, it's truly cowardly when you think of it that Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam, this young woman, they chose to attack her in the way that they did. It's, it's nothing short of cowardly. And it's almost because they knew that they couldn't get to Imam Ali alayhi salam, so they would get to the thing that he loved most in this world. I want you to imagine now that the attack has taken place and now you're walking inside of the house and you see Fatima Sahra on the ground and she's in so much pain and her children are around her as well and they're crying and they're so traumatized by what they have just seen what do you think you would do to try and make that situation easier and more bearable? Um, I think your initial reaction is to remove them from the situation to take them away from their mother but in my heart I also think that nothing could take them away from her at that moment um, I think that I would try I would you know call for help and or um, uh, you know try and find Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, at, at that point he's not aware of what's happened. Um, you know, try and comfort her. See if there's something that you can do for her. Try and help manage the bleeding. You know, wet towels or whatever. You, what you just said, it reminds me of a narration I once heard where the angels could not bear to see Imam al Hussein, that little boy, on the chest of his mother Fatima alayhi salam. And it, it makes you wonder if the angels could not bear to see that sight, how did they bear to see? Shimmer sitting on the chest of Abba Abdullah on the day of Ashura. Finally, sister, I would like you to again picture that you are in Medina, but this time you are with Imam Mehdi, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance and make it easy for him. I want you to imagine that you are walking beside him and you say to him, Yabna Rasulallah, where are you taking me? And he tells you, I'm taking you to visit the grave of my grandmother, Fatima alayhi salam. This blessed grave that we don't know where it is due to the oppression she faced in her life. She was buried at night in secret with only a handful of individuals knowing where she was buried and how much our hearts yearn during this time to be beside our lady. I want you to imagine that you're standing by that blessed grave now. If you could say anything to her, what would you say to her? I'd say... Assalamu alaikum. Sayyidat Nisa al alameen Peace be upon you, Lady of the World. You would be lost for words. Yeah. Yes. It's really a hard thing to imagine. We've stood in front of Imam al Hussein and Abba al Fadl al Abbas in Karbala, Imam Ali in Najif, Imam Rida in Mashhad, Sayyid Zainab in Syria. Yet, we do not know what it is like to stand in front of Our Lady Zahra alayhi salam. I thank you so much, sister, that you joined me today here for Imagine. And I thank you so much for your thoughtful and wonderful contribution to this show. And I pray that Our Lady Fatima Zahra alayhi salam is pleased with you and your efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all firm and steadfast on the path of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as -salam, despite the trials of this dunya. And may he hasten the reappearance of our master Sahib al zaman so that he may bring goodness and justice to this world as it has been filled with evil and injustice currently. أين بقية سلطان؟ أين بقية سلطان؟ أين بقية سلطان؟ ألا كراس خداي خدا كلاد كبيا Oh